In Sydney, a torrid, ill-fated affair that ends in tragedy and an enduring mystery. This is a lurid story of adultery, arson, and finally, murder. I, I was numb. I, I just, uh, it was, at first, I didn't want to hear what they were saying. It started with a chance meeting at a Sydney hospital. Kylie Lubuchardier was a nurse. Paul Wilkinson, a liaison officer with the New South Wales Police Force. They'd met before, but this time, something clicked. It's very manipulative. Very, very manipulative. She was looking for something and thought that she found it. Soon, Kylie and Paul were in the throes of a wildly passionate affair. And it mattered little that they were both married or that Paul had a tiny baby. And they weren't involved in their sordid sexual trysts. They were madly phoning and texting each other. In just four months, 23,836 times. Yet incredibly, they managed to hide their dirty little secret. That'd be one secret you probably wish Kylie hadn't kept. Exactly, exactly. But as we'll discover tonight, when Kylie became pregnant and their secret was about to be exposed, things changed dramatically. And she was scared. Very scared, very, very scared. These are the last haunting images of Kylie Labouchardier. What really happened to her, only one person knows, Paul James Wilkinson. And he's not telling anyone. Well, can you think of anywhere she might have gone? No, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Very, very manipulative. A pathological liar. Quite incredible, the stories that he actually had made up. It's 10 years since Kylie Labouchardier was murdered. Her body never to be found. In life, she was outgoing, vibrant, happy. Is that a good looking woman? I to have it all. Oh, yeah, and the bride. <laughs> she was beautiful. She was generous. Um, She's very kind-hearted, very loving, very caring person. When she went into nursing, that's what she did. She cared for people. She just loved life. It was through yeah. nursing that Kylie fell for the charming, persistent Paul Wilkinson. Julie says she's never seen a deer like this before. Paul was a patient at Sutherland Hospital, where Kylie worked. They'd met before, but this time something clicked and they started an intense affair. It mattered little that both were newly married. Well, the Paul's wife, Julie, had a baby on the way. At the time, did you think there was something else going on? Not really, because I was so consumed with, one, the pregnancy not going the way I thought it would, and then trying to work out being a, a first-time mother. What about him? Was he, was he at home all the time, or was he going out? He was going out a lot. He would tell me he was going fishing and things like that. Who knows? In retrospect, I don't know. When they weren't engaged in steamy sexual trysts, Kylie and Paul were endlessly texting and phoning each other. In four months, they made contact a staggering 23,836 times. That's more than once every 10 minutes, every hour of every day. The texts, the sheer volume of texts between Wilkinson and Kylie, it was pretty extraordinary, wasn't it? That's incredible. Yeah, I, I'm not much of a texter myself, but uh, yeah, they were almost 24 hours a day, you know, seven days a week. Despite the incessant phone calls and texts, Kylie's husband, Sean, was also oblivious to the affair. Like Paul and Julie Wilkinson, they'd only been married for a year but already the relationship was all but over. Kylie's behaviour changed dramatically, absolutely dramatically. Kylie announced to the family that Sean and her were getting a divorce and their family naturally were very much shell-shocked. Um, couldn't believe that this was actually happening. So. Did she say why? She didn't um, really give a reason why. And at that point in time, the family had no knowledge of Paul Wilkinson. Wilkinson's marriage was also doomed. There were tensions in the household 
He was constantly on sick leave from the police force where he worked as an Aboriginal community liaison officer. Wilkinson was eventually sacked because of his appalling work record and it didn't help he was a chronic gambler, a fantasist and a controlling bully. Can you give an example what sort of things he'd do? I wouldn't be allowed to wear anything low cut, um, could have no male friends, only had a couple of female friends that he approved of. So yeah, it was very isolating. Did he ever get aggressive? Yeah. Physically violent? Physically violent, threatening. He'd threaten to kill me, he'd threaten to strangle me, yeah. Over what sort? I, and I think it did get worse, probably in that, that time period after, after our son was born. And it was when their son was born that things really got weird in the Wilkinson household. To continue his affair, Paul Wilkinson needed an empty nest. And so he concocted an extraordinary story to convince his wife to move out, saying that his police work had put them in danger. Paul then said we got death threats. It was apparently to do with a case and he said it'd be safer if I stayed at mum and dad's. So my son and I went straight from the hospital to my parents' house. Didn't even get to go home? Nope. No. Did you have suspicions then? No. No. Did you see the death threats? Yep. What did they say? Um, there was one that I remember vividly. It was my son's teddy bear stuck to the wall with a knife through it with a handwritten note, bye bye baby. By early 2004, something had to give. Paul Wilkinson was busy juggling a wife, a new baby and a secret lover. Then in April came the bombshell. Kylie was pregnant. Did she, did she like to confide in you? Did you feel you were a trusted friend as well as a mum? No, no, Kylie didn't confide in anybody. Um, she was her own person. She was very, very secretive. Looking back, that'd be one secret you probably wish Kylie hadn't kept. Exactly, exactly. But Kylie did tell I one person, that. Paul Wilkinson. Yeah, that's, that's wonderful. Little could she know that this joyous announcement would seal her fate. You didn't know she was pregnant? We didn't know what was going on. We hadn't met this person. We didn't know um, the control that he had over Kylie at that point of time. Yeah, no idea. While Kylie was looking forward to a new life with Paul Wilkinson, he had other ideas. Nevertheless, he agreed to leave his wife and move with Kylie to Dubbo in central New South Wales. Well, at least that's what he told her. Do you think he ever actually planned to start a new life with Kylie? I don't think so, no. He was a string you along. It looks that way. We, we, we didn't have any evidence to support that. Two days before her murder, Kylie excitedly made arrangements for removalists to transport her furniture to Dubbo. Then she sent this text to Paul Wilkinson. Today, and then Wednesday, and then it's Dubbo. You and I together forever. Did she tell you she was planning on going to Dubbo? No. No. She really just up and left? Yes. We, we had no idea that that's what she was planning to do. Instead, the secretive Kylie told her family she was going to the country to spend a few days with friends. On the 28th of April 2004, Kylie set off to meet Paul Wilkinson for the drive to Dubbo. With her, she had $25,000 in cash, but she still stopped off here at the local ATM to withdraw even more money. It is the very last image of Kylie Labouchardier. When Kylie arrived here at Sydney's Central Railway Station, this is something she'd been planning for months. She'd been excitedly texting and phoning Paul all the way here. The furniture was already on its way to Dubbo. She just had to change trains and then it was a short ride to Sutherland, where she and Paul would begin their new life together. She had no idea what was coming next. She thought she was starting a new life. Yeah. He'd planned to end her life. Yeah, it's, it would appear that's what happened on the night. Disbelief. I, I was numb. I, I just, uh, was, at first I didn't want to hear 
Oh, Kun. Do you want to hear what they were saying? It was very, very hard. Very, very hard. Kylie Labouchardier thought she was starting a new life with her lover, Paul Wilkinson. But just hours after these images of her were recorded, she was dead. <laughs> it would be weeks before her terrible fate was revealed. Alarm bells rang within me. Alarm bells started ringing. We kept on ringing her mobile phone and, and like, there was no answer. And this was totally out of character for Kylie to be gone days, even visiting friends with no contact. Kylie's family reported her missing here at Gosford Police Station on the 8th of May. Right from the start, police were interested in Paul Wilkinson. Three days later, they asked him to come in for an interview, but he didn't turn up. It soon became apparent that getting the truth out of Wilkinson, in fact, getting anything at all, would be a long and tortuous business. I think where really she might have gone. Uh, I don't know. 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 Police suspected Wilkinson because they now had the records of the thousands of text messages and phone calls he and Kylie had exchanged. But for the next three years, he consistently denied having an affair with her. Did you ever reply to her SMSs? Yeah, I did. What, did you ring her up or did you send her SMS? I didn't um, bring her all that, all that often. All up, I'd say about no more than three times, two, three times. I made, made contact. It was a good lie, an experienced lie. It was an experienced lie, yes. I wouldn't say it was a good one, but it was an experienced one. It would appear that way, yeah. I know I've wasted your time in the past, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm beyond it now. But the lies just got bigger and more outlandish. In the days after Kylie disappeared, there was a mysterious fire at Paul <laughs> Wilkinson's home. He claimed it was started by Kylie, who wanted revenge after he rejected her sexual advances. Can you just uh, tell us a little bit more about the threat she, what sort of threat she was making towards you? So there was going to be harm to myself, harm to my little boy, and, and harm to Julie. She actually said that my little boy and Julie would be killed. What sort of lies did you have to try and work through? Oh, what type of lies did we have to work through? Uh, that uh, Kylie was involved in a drug syndicate, that Kylie was standing over him. If you don't kill her, I will. Wow, I just, yeah. I, I can't remember the lies of, of so many. When were you aware of this other woman, Kylie? Not fully aware until detectives interviewed me and they told me that he'd been having an affair and the amount of SMSs and the pregnancy. What was it like getting that? Oh, that was a bombshell. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. Very much so. But despite that bombshell, Julie Wilkinson stood by her husband for months. It is now two minutes past three. Interview is concluded. He taunted Kylie's family and detectives with endless false leads about her fate and where he'd hidden her body. Before we came down here with Paul James Wilkinson, he said he couldn't be sure, but it's somewhere located within this area. At one stage, Wilkinson even tried to frame another policeman with Kylie's murder. The statement is true to the best of my knowledge. Uh, and he did try to implicate another policeman? He did, yes. And the pressure you've got is you're pretty convinced there's been a murder, yes. but you don't have a body? No. Don't have a witness? No. No crime scene? No. What are the odds of success in a case like that? Uh, we had no forensic evidence either. But their luck was about to change. Julie Wilkinson eventually saw through her husband's lies and decided to help police. When did you start to think that your husband could have killed Kylie? I don't remember exactly when it was, but all the stories that didn't add up and didn't match and kept changing. How did that make you feel? It was... The fear of, my son's father's done this. <laughs> That's hard. Now I'm gonna cry. <laughs> we can stop for a sec. This is really... Normally it doesn't get to me. 
This is the moment for you where you had to make a decision for you and your son. Mm. And you wanted to do something that, where you could both be safe. Yep. And soon there was another dramatic breakthrough. Paul Wilkinson sent Julie this incriminating text. Everyone has a reason for hiding a crime. Call me nasty. Call me cruel. Her family can live their lives in misery for all I care. Fuck them. Weapon they can have. Her? No. How crucial was that text? It indicated that he knew the weapon, where it was and what was used, um, and where the body was. But that wasn't enough on its own? No, no, far from it. But what did finally crack the case was not one of Paul's texts, rather the text Kylie had so excitedly sent to him just before she disappeared. Today, and then Wednesday, and then it's Dubbo. You and I are together forever. For the purposes of uh, the interview, Paul, could you please state your full name and spell your surname? There was now no way of denying the affair. Wilkinson was charged with Kylie Labouchardier's murder. I lost my temper and I just went straight for the throat. He finally confessed, but even then he claimed he only killed her because she was threatening his family. So you've lost your temper, you've grabbed her around the throat, and before I knew it, she was limp. I know it sounds like a silly question, but what was Kylie doing at the time? She obviously trying to scream or trying to free herself. There was a bit of a, a, a bit of a struggle. <laughs> you've dug the hole, uh, you've then put Kylie in the hole. Yes. And then uh, you put the dirt back on top. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and what did you do with the shovel? I took it. I took it and I threw it in the river. But true to form, Wilkinson's cruel games continued as police tried unsuccessfully to find Kylie's body. We're currently on uh, Cruel Road at Mooney Mooney, directly beneath the uh, Mooney Mooney Bridge. This is Mooney Mooney, north of Sydney, and it's here that Paul Wilkinson led police on a wild goose chase. He claimed that this is where Kylie Labouchardier's body was buried. Now, because of his police background, Wilkinson knew that they would have to take his claims seriously, that they would have to follow up each and every lead. But Wilkinson was playing a cruel game one that raised and then dashed the hopes of Kylie's family. And he did it time and time again. After each search, it was just gut-wrenching. And that, that's, as an investigator, you can only imagine what it would have been like for the family. The frustration must have been enormous. It was, it was, um, I was on an emotional roller coaster. There was just days and days, I just, uncontrollable sobbing. I suffered a, um, a massive breakdown with the searches. I, um, I slept with the mobile phone to, to my ear. How would you describe what he was doing with these false searches? Very cruel. Very, very cruel. But while police never found Kylie's body, her family did get their day in court, and it was the first time they'd ever come face to face with her killer. What did you think of Wilkinson? When you first saw him in court, what did you think of what you saw? I don't even know how I can answer that, Brett. I, yeah. I... A mongrel that murdered my daughter. It had taken five years, but on the 22nd of May, 2009, Paul Wilkinson was sentenced to a minimum of 24 years in prison for Kylie Labouchardier's murder. That was a feeling of absolute jubilation that we had won it for her. Yeah, jubilation. The whole family just could not believe it. Couldn't believe it. Fucked around with you for a while. Mm -hmm. I apologise for that. <laughs> Paul Wilkinson was finally behind bars. 
He played a cruel five-year game of cat and mouse with police and Kylie Labouchardier's grief-stricken family. The life sentence of grief he has given to my family. I, I was numb, relieved. It was very, very emotional. Very emotional for, for all of us. Very emotional at the time. Finally, finally, it was over. That's, yeah. We had got a result. There's one thing that's not quite over though. No, that's correct. We, we haven't found her. He holds the golden key, Brett. He knows what he did that night and he knows where she is. And I'm hoping, within hope, that one day that we will, he will let us know and that we will find her. For Paul Wilkinson's wife, Julie, it's been an incredibly traumatic experience too. Finding out her husband was having an affair and a child with another woman and discovering he was a killer. Look, don't sit and think for one second Julie's entirely innocent. She's lied to you for her, for her teeth. But perhaps cruelest of all was the fact Wilkinson had tried to implicate her in Kylie's murder. She was aware of the murder. Right now? Yep, she's well aware of it. What's Paul done to you? He ruined my life for several years. He, both him and Kylie, took away my ability to enjoy parenthood for the first time. He's a narcissist and I don't know, he's evil. Yeah. He's not insane, he's very cunning. But evil, yeah. And even in prison, Paul Wilkinson is still pulling the strings, manipulating those left behind. So to this day, we still don't know where Kylie was buried? No, no. And what does that mean for the family? Yeah, can't even imagine. It's got to be horrendous. I'd like to have closure. I'd like to know that I can give her the funeral that she deserves to be able to talk to her. Um, I talk to her every day. I see this shining star in the sky and that reminds me of Kylie. And you feel Kylie's looking over you? Oh, definitely. She's my guardian angel. She's still being smiley Kylie? Oh, definitely. And she'll always be smiley Kylie to me.